Hi everyone, thank you for joining us and hoping you all are well. We're going to be looking at this conflation between this group of people known as the Aguda and the people group known as Judah. There appears to be an identity appropriation going on with respect to an African, European, Brazilian confederacy uh, that has served to create confusion about the identity of the Aguda and the people in the Bible known as Judah. And so there has been this uh, significant mixing in terms of this identity that has created significant confusion. And so what has taken place is that when individuals see Judah or a Judah or a Gouda, uh, the assumption is that they are looking at remnants of this lost tribe of Israel or this kingdom of Israel. And so we're going to look at what the distinctions are between the Aguda, the Ajuda, and the Judah from the Bible. And you're going to see that these are not the same entities. We're going to look at a number of dynamics that foster this confusion with respect to this Judah and this Aguda. One instance is with respect to the kingdom of Weda. You have all of these transliterations for the kingdom of Weda, and one transliteration, of course, is Judah. You also have the Ajuda, which is also synonymous with Aguda. You even have these references to a king of the Aguda kingdom. And then you have references to the king of Aguda land. And so when individuals see this repetitive Aguda dynamic, there is an assumption that this Aguda, this Ajuda, is synonymous with these biblical identities. And then you have this focus of this identity in Nigeria, Portugal, and Spain. And so what this does is it ties the identity to the Iberian identity, further solidifying the schema of these entities being this lost tribe of Israel. And so then when individuals see this name pop up in other places, there is again the assumption that all of this is related and that all of these people are related to this lost tribe of Israel. And so you see this Aguda in Spain. You see this Aguda Canary Islands. You see this Aguda in Uruguay. And if you look on the screen, you can see multiple instances where the J and the G are interchanged with respect to the same word. And so you have A G U D A and then you have A J U D A or you have G U D A or J U D A. You have G U D E A and J U D E A. And these are distinct entities, even though they look like the same words with the letters being interchanged, there are distinctions in terms of identity. And here you can see this distinction and you can see the origin of this name. And so this name is not Judah from the Bible. This is a family coming out of Spain and it is Aguda. And you can see here that this surname Aguda was first found in the Basque region of northern Spain. And here you can see multiple ways that this Aguda surname presents in different languages. Now what's really important to make note of with respect to this Aguda family is that this family migrated into the Americas very early. We're looking at the 1500s here. And so you see that this Aguda family migrated into Peru 1564, migrated into Nicaragua 1534, and migrated into New Spain in 1580. 
And this is one of the reasons why there are many questions about some of these groups that identify as indigenous uh, when they are quote unquote found or discovered in the 1700s. And so they might have what's known as a first contact in the 1700s or the 1600s when they've been on the soil for over 100 years. However, that does not mean that they were indigenous to the land. And so this this is a big issue because you can see that you have individuals coming over very early um, and being able to take on all sorts of identities. You also see this dynamic in Africa because these individuals also migrated to Africa. And here again, you see that this is a Romance language surname. And here you can see that it has a definition for this name, which is sharp and keen. And you can also see that this name is coming from the Romance language areas. So you see Aguda here and you see the individual's birthplace is Italy. And this is from the 1800s. This person was born in 1895. And here is another registration card with the name Aguda. And you see that this individual came from the Philippines. And so again, places where there was colonization uh, from this Iberian area. And here you have another individual, Jose Aguda, coming out of Spain, arriving in New York uh, through Ellis Island. And this was a little over 100 years ago. Now, while this is a Spanish surname or a Portuguese surname, an Iberian surname, uh, what you have here is that this name is primarily found in Nigeria and it has the highest density in Ghana. And what people often think automatically when they see this is that this is some biblical connection versus looking at the origin of this name, which is this name is coming out of Spain. This is a Spanish surname. And so the surname, even though it looks phonetically similar to this biblical identity, this is a distinct identity that is coming out of Iberia. And so this name has more Roman roots, uh, more Babylonian roots than anything else. And here again, you see Agudas and you see that the translation is sharp. And this again speaks to the distinction between this name and the biblical entity known as Judah, because the name Judah generally means praise or praised or celebrate or celebrated, something along those lines. And so it doesn't mean a sharp or severe or piercing like you will see with this particular name. And you can see again, it's translating to searing and penetrating. Now to further show this distinction, we're going to look in Strong's Concordance. Now this particular uh, translation is a Spanish translation. And so you can see that this word Aguda or Agudas is translating into Strong's Concordance in this particular language at 8150. And again, you can see here that this is not the same Judah. And so this may be on the west coast of Africa. This may have been in the Iberian area. These people may have been there. They may be going by this name and there may be all sorts of assumptions about who these people are. But the assumption that this name is synonymous with Judah, as in Jacob, uh, that's not a correct assumption. And so uh, what you have here again is this Aguda meaning sharp or sharpen. And here you see other elements in terms of definition that distinguish this Aguda from Judah. And you see that it means sharp, contend, litigate. 
uh, preparation for judgment, sharpened of arrows, false witness. And so again, this is not about the same thing that that name Judah is about. Even though it looks the same, you see these phonetic similarities, it's not the same name. Again, you see this identity of Aguda being associated with pricking, sharpening, and piercing. Now you also see another entry in Strong's for Aguda, uh, and you see that it is translating to a band. It goes on to indicate that this Aguda is a metaphor for fetters of slavery. Now, of course, this is noteworthy because the Aguda, the Judah on the west coast of Africa, uh, were considered the premier slave trading kingdom on that coast. And so you also have here that this Aguda is associated with a band of men. Going on, you see that it means to bind it means to burden. It's also noted in terms of translation that this Aguda is right next to Agaj, which was the king of Amalek. And we've talked about these entities before. And then right next to that, you have the name that is associated with Haman. Now, there are a number of other odd dynamics with respect to this name, Aguda. One is that it is highly associated with the Catholic Church, and sometimes it is considered synonymous with church, and so this uh, name, Aguda. You also have this name, Aguda, characterizing a large collective of people who are out of Brazil. Now, it's unclear about the complete identity of the individuals because there is uh, some indication that the individuals have a Portuguese background. Uh, the individuals are often identified as coming out of Brazil and then returning to Africa as Afro-Brazilians. Uh, you also have them identified as Catholic Afro-Brazilians. And so there are a number of dynamics going on with uh, this Aguda name, but it's also important to keep in mind that the Agudas are also associated with D'Souza. And so the Agudas are associated with being descendants of sort of a dynasty uh, coming out of this slave trading heritage. And so it's a little odd that they are also understood as individuals who are returning uh, from Brazil to Africa after having been enslaved in Brazil. Because you have such a high percentage of individuals going to Brazil, coming out of the west coast of Africa. Uh, some of this, as time goes on, it appears that this was a major colonizer dynamic. And so it doesn't look as much like a slave trading dynamic as it looks like a colonizer dynamic using slavery as one of the vehicles for this major colonization initiative. And again, it's important to keep in mind that you had individuals who were understood as the Agudas uh, moving into the Americas in the 1500s. And so they have been in the Americas for a very long time. And as you may recall in a prior discussion, that kingdom on the west coast of Africa was not associated with that word praise or celebrate. It was associated with the word God, understood as the kingdom of God. Now, this dynamic further cemented this idea that this particular Aguda, Ajuda, Judah, Juida kingdom on the west coast of Africa was a biblical entity. But as you can see, this Aguda, Ajuda is associated with the Catholic Church. And so therefore you have this connotation 
of God with respect to this entity. As we wrap this up, it's clear that there are distinctions between uh, these entities known as Aguda, Ajuda, Judah on the west coast of Africa, coming out of Spain, coming out of Portugal, coming out of Brazil. Uh, these individuals are distinct from the entity in scripture understood as Judah. In fact, the entity understood as Aguda, Ajuda, Judah on the west coast of Africa, Portugal, Spain, Brazil. These entities were responsible for enslaving the entity known as Judah in scripture, whether you're talking about them as representing the Babylonian Empire, representing the Roman Empire, uh, regardless of what you're looking at in terms of which empire is being represented, those empires were historically understood as the empires that oppressed and enslaved the entity known as Judah in scripture. And continuing on with this oppressive uh, slave trading history, you have this entity being the major slave trader on the west coast of Africa. And so running the slave trade from Portugal, Spain, France, England, Brazil, Africa, you have these entities uh, serving as the bedrock, the foundation for this entire uh, transcontinental dynamic. And so in accordance with that definition of this name, Aguda, you see that they represent that which is the fetters of slavery. And so here we come back again with this issue about the fetters of slavery. And you also have these entities being associated with or coming out of Brazil, which is the land of iron. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care, season.